Welcome to Story Time with Sonia. Since we're still in May and we are doing mental illness, um, I want to tell you a story. It's about DID. Then I'll explain to you at the end what DID is. Am I dreaming or is this one of my personalities talking to me? I'm in my car. I drive to a discount store. I park my car, get out, and walk in the store. I see Valentine decoration, but it's months before Valentine's. I noticed some black and pink roses for my Chanel bathroom. A sales clerk said there are sales on toilet paper. I respond, thank you. As I'm walking through the aisles, a man grabbed my purse. Stop him, I yell. The security grabs him. I realize I'm licensed to kill, but before I reach for my gun, they holding him. I'm thinking my money, my credit cards. He's going in my purse while they're holding him. I grab my purse. He yelled, you fucking be. I taste him. I hear someone say Natasha, but no one knows me. They doesn't know Natasha. Am I the only one hearing them calling Natasha? I'm not Natasha. She's my split personality. Shh. Don't tell no one. I start with myself. My name is... Quinn. I'm not the original identity, but I think I have been around the longest. I currently do most of the front, and I keep everyone organized and try to keep the system running smoothly. Monica is our original identity until we move away from our family of origin. She was the one fronting most of the time. Ever since we move away, she stopped fronting. Right now, we don't know if that's a temporary thing or if it's a permanent but it seemed like the best decision for everyone. Esmeralda is a childlike author who will tell you that she is four years old. She likes to play with toys and play Facebook games like Candy Crush. Haley is our other childhood author. We think that she is emotionally about eight. She likes to watch Disney movies, but also likes to watch upsetting TV shows that are way too mature for her. Sandra has the emotional maturity of a teenager. I have previously joked about her being a little edge lord with a name to match, but that's a big mean. I honestly don't know what she's, she's into at the moment. Katie is a little ball of sunshine, according to one of our friends. I don't actually know how old Katie is. She gets along with everyone. She's silly and friendly and impossible to dislike, even when she's a bit of a jerk. I think she does it so that she can get away with doing whatever she wants to do. Zoe is creative and smart. I previously said she wasn't very friendly, but that's not very accurate. She's not very friendly to me, and she's not very trusted, but she's actually very social and more interested in socializing than I am. Zoe is very emotional and a little hot-headed. Aria is one of the most mature authors in our group. For a long time, I couldn't get a read on her, and I didn't know what was going on with her. She kept herself closed off from me for some reason, but I got to know her more recently. She holds a lot of our memories and seems to be trying to figure out what to do with them. When she fronts, she takes care of lots of self-care type tasks and household things. She seems kind of like the mom of the group. Christiana is an altar that I know exists, but I haven't interacted with it in a long time. I don't really know much about her. We also have an unnamed author who exists mainly to harass and persecute us, but since they don't front, I won't go into details about them. 
our relationship with each other vary quite a bit, but I think we are a lot like a family. There's some occasional friction and tension, but everyone has the same goal. We're all just trying to survive. I absolutely hate answering this question every time it's asked, so I'm going to skip it. No, they really more of a media thing. I think it's done in film and TV so that the audience can tell which altar is present. In reality, it would be exhausting to run to a closet for a wardrobe change every time there was a switch. They do say that we have different clothing preference. If Zoe is planning on being in control all day, she might dress more feminine than I would normally dress. If Aria is fronting, they are almost always wearing their favorite hoodie. But it's not like wearing that hoodie is for sure indication that Aria is currently fronting. Only myself and a few others are able to do our work tasks. Haley is a better cook than most. Only Haley knows how to play the flute. Zoe is a creative writer. No, others may disagree with me on this, but I personally believe that this is for the most part a media myth. The physical body is the physical body. The only physical difference that you can have between alters are the ones that can be impacted by emotional and psychological states, like place bowls and conversation disorder. It's not like the movie split where one alter can be diabetic when the others aren't. However, if the body has diabetes, then different alters could have different blood sugar levels because your stress levels can cause your blood sugar to go up and down. This is really on this is really on how well we are coping with our current life stress. When we are doing well, memories are shared in cold consciousness and is common. When the stress level rises and we are struggling to cope, amnesia and memory gaps become more common. Amnesia can be really frightening, especially waking up someplace you don't expect to be. It's not so bad if I'm just at home and I lost a few hours, but if I'm suddenly at the grocery store and the last thing I remember is being at home in the bed is pretty alarming. I cope with it by trying to stick to a schedule, journal, journaling, using notes and candles to keep track of everything. I try to stay really organized and compensate for everything. This sounds ridiculous, but internal communication is as simple as thinking at the other's also, when internal communication breaks down, we just journal and things like Google Keeps to talk to each other. If you're married or in a relationship, how do your authors feel about your so-called other? We basically have the same friends. We have different relationships with those friends. All of us have good relationship with our significant other. Most of us are about to experience co consciousness with each other. Not all of us are drift compatible with each other to borrow a term from Pacific Rims. No, we have never experienced an internal word. When we were in our early 20s, we were more open about our diagnosis, but we experienced some real negative consequences because that people tend to see us only as diagnosis. It's very difficult for you to understand. It's hard to live a normal life and people know we much prefer that people don't know. It's nothing... The thing everyone we want everyone to know about the idea is nothing like most of the media dispectations when it comes with what you live with your whole life. It just feels normal. What is the worst or most embarrassing thing to ever happen as you as a room? I won't embarrass myself by going into details, but it can be hard having child like all this. It was a big problem when we were younger and things are much more in control now, but there was some embarrassing moment. I don't give her enough credit, so I use this opportunity to talk about To talk about her. We've been joking lately about how she's a fire alarm that goes off when something isn't right. But she's kind of a shitty fire alarm because if you don't pay attention to her fast enough, she'll just spray gasoline in the whole building and burn the whole damn place down. Metaphorically, of course, to make sure you are aware of the fire. 
But the truth is, she probably has saved my ass dozens of times. And she would have saved my ass dozens more if I had just listened to her more. She's really good at knowing when situations are unsafe and knowing when someone is wrong. She's one of the few of us who is brave enough to use her voice and really scream and stand up for herself. I'm sure that at least a few of the times she screamed, get the F away from me, could have turned out really badly if she hadn't. Nope, nothing immoral. Depending on your standards, standards of morality, absolutely, we have disagreement about moral behavior all the time. Constantly doesn't, constantly does things that I find ex- unacceptable. Yes, yes, I have experienced bullying and discrimination statement because of my DID. That's why we have chosen not to tell most people. No, it doesn't interfere with having a family or children. It's just that the children and family has to be aware of it. No, it hasn't interfered with education in high school. We were able to finish our undergraduate degree, but ultimately it did stop us from completing our master program and working in the field that we intend to work in. At a current level of function, I don't think we could hold a traditional nine to five job. We currently work from home. And are really happy with our career, but we are lucky that this is an option for us. We choose not to drive because of the severity of our dissociation. The risk of disassociating while driving is just too much for us, so we are relying on other people for transportation. Honestly, it's not the DID itself. It's working through the underlying issues that cause the DID. Unpacking all of that trauma can be exhausted and disrupted just when you think you found system. Someone finds a bunch of new baggage to unpack. The positive part of DID, most of us survive. We survive it. So I'd like to thank you for listening to my podcast. Please give it a five-star review on Speaker Spotify. And because wherever you listen to your podcast at, please share. You can leave a comment on this podcast at sv seven six six seven five two at gmail.com. You can follow me at son.ia9795 Instagram, Sony Santiago, Twitter, Sony Santiago, Sony Santiago, Facebook. Please check out my son's clothing line at um conquest empire 2020 on instagram please you can go to my website http dot dot slash podcasters dot com slash wordpress dot com have a blessed night